Above everyone. Let's roll it. Let's see who will be first. Okay, here we go. We have our first volunteer. Good. He will be coming in in a moment. <coughs> Just ignore the talking, everyone. This is what Sorry. happens to Mark whenever he's channeling. My throat, it's my throat. <laughs> the spirits do this to him. Mm. We're being, we're being, we're being approached by a spirit from Dave. Dave. Hi, Dave. How are you? Uh, I'm Mark Edward. And what I want you to do, uh, this isn't going to be any sort of thing I can guarantee. So what I'd like you to do, if you have a specific question, and this goes for everyone else who's listening as well, if you have a specific question in mind, I can be a lot more specific with what I see or feel. So this works two ways. Number one, it helps you focus in, and it also helps me focus in too. Otherwise, if we didn't have something fairly specific, at the end you might think, well, he didn't tell me anything because your mind's racing to all these different places. So if you could now focus on a question, uh, I'm gonna do the best I can to give you my impression of what I see. Uh, are you ready? Dave? I guess he's saying I'm ready. Here we go. Sorry about okay. that. Are you um, ready? Don't, don't uh, say anything. Don't say anything. Let me see what I'm getting. <sighs> getting two things. The first one is, it almost looks like a light bulb, but I think it's the back of somebody's head. Somebody or something is walking, oh, moving away from you. Uh, and my impression of that situation is that it's, you may be thinking of it as a waste of time, like just, that's the way it's supposed to be, goodbye. But I don't think you've, you've seen or heard the last of this situation. Now, it could be, a, could be a person, it could be a thing, it could be uh, some kind of project or something that you, you were focusing on. And it, it's like time to let it go. Uh, I also see blonde hair. But again, I'm only seeing the back of somebody's head, so I don't know whether it's male or female or who it may be involved with. It could be uh, a business partner. It could be a romantic situation. But I'm, the overall feeling is don't be bitter right now. Uh, whatever is moving away, you'll have another chance with this situation if you want it. So that's pretty much it. Now, uh, those are the strongest feelings I get. Uh, now, I, you, can, you can tell me if I was accurate anyway or not. It's entirely up to you because at the end of this hour, we're going to be talking about what, what went on and how I saw whatever I saw. So... That's, that's it. It comes really fast. It comes like a picture. I see it. It's gone. So do, do you want to acknowledge it now or just take it for what it's worth and move on? It's up to you. Okay. Um, so I, I'm at a, a little bit of a, a loss. I, I saw the, you know, the live feed about Catalina and I thought, oh, they're, they're going to be uh, debunking something. Let's, let's uh, join the Zoom here. Um, so I, but I really don't uh, know what the big picture is, the, the setup. So I was thinking of something, uh, right when you were describing the, the person walking away, 
uh, but that wasn't really a, a, a very good match. But but I um, maybe we could try it again because um, I, I missed the the introduction and I might not be able to stick around the whole hour. I got to no. Here here's the deal. Uh, well, this will okay. be this will it'll be it'll be available for you to watch later. Okay. Okay, great. Like I said, this is this is not a a. I mean, if I wanted to be exactly right, that's not what this is about. This is, and you, and I don't want to uh, talk about what happened with me until the end. So I'm going to just leave it there because later on you may look back and say, oh, wait a minute, that's what he was talking about. Or if you can't make a connection, it's a, it's a real psychic event, right? Which means it didn't work, okay? So we're not necessarily trying to be accurate. We're just using a technique so that at the end of this, we can kind of make a, uh, uh, not a judgment, but a, a viewpoint so that people understand how this uh, works. All, be, all will be explained later. No, all will be explained later. If you can't stay for the full hour, it'll be on uh, Facebook and you can just fast forward to the last 10 minutes. Hi, Dave. Okay. Thanks for being Thanks. first. Okay. Howdy, Susan. Hi. I'm going to move you out. Um, okay. Well, thanks. Sure. And we have another <clears throat> who will be joining us. You guys line up. Here is our next person to read. She'll, it's a woman this time. Hello, Hello. there. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Who, what's your name? Adrian. Adrian. Okay, Adrian. Um, so, saying to the, the gentleman before you, but if you have a specific area or question, just kind of formulate that in your mind, almost like a picture. Like what I'm getting right away from you is the color blue and I don't know whether it's the moon or the sun, but there is a very bright object in front of you. I'll have to focus in on what that means in a second. Uh, I also see a very beautiful flower, like a gladiola or something that's kind of laying in front of you, feels like it wants some sort of attention. Maybe it needs to be put in water. I don't know. So there's a natural connection that I get there, okay? So the thing I'm gonna go with, I think, is, is uh, the moon. Uh, it feels like the moon represents time. It represents uh, the phases of the moon change when, when nature tells them to. They don't change when we want them to. Uh, in other words, if I go out and look at the sky and it's a half moon, I, I can stand there and yell at it. Nothing's gonna change it until nature gives it this time for it to become a full moon. Uh, so two things. There seems to be something that you're, you're in a hurry about or you're being a little impatient, okay? <laughs> so a flower is, a, is, is something that it, you enjoy it in the moment. I don't know if there's a connection there, but it's almost as if you are in a hurry and there's no reason to be in a hurry because whatever's going to happen is going to happen, but it's going to take a little more time than you plan. I feel like you are a person who is very results oriented. When you put your energy into something, you expect to see results pretty much immediately. So, in regards to the question that you're thinking of, and again, you didn't write anything down or tell anybody anything, right? I'm gonna say, 
whatever's going to happen is going to be completed by the end of July. So that's not very long to wait. Uh, don't spin your wheels, focus on what you can get done and let go of this hurry, hurrying. I don't know whether you're maybe you're hurrying to juggle too many things, whatever it is, just have the, have the intuition to say, okay, I can just let some things go and they'll take care of themselves. Okay, does that make sense? I, I can't hear you. Can you hear her, Susan? Sorry, She's I had my mute on because my husband's out in the back. Uh, okay, so what, what my, do you think? Yeah, I, I could certainly apply it to my question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good, Adrian. That is good. And again, we didn't plan anything. It's just whatever it was. Okay, yeah. so moving right along, uh, are you going to stay till the end of the show? I'm going to try and stay to the end, yes. Okay. Because okay. again, uh, that's all I'm going to say. No, I'm <laughs> do you get to? Do I get to talk about my question at the end too? If you want, I suppose so. Can you ask a question about your question? <laughs> no, I was saying, do I get to tell you what the question is at the end? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm waiting for some more people okay. to join in. Or you could, or you could, to, in order to increase the the number of people who get in line, you can tell tell us what the question was right now if you want. Okay, I, I can do that. My question was, uh, we have a, a trip planned to Italy in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're supposed to be in Italy for two weeks and then we're supposed to cruise on a uh, uh, ship from Italy to Fort Lauderdale. And okay. my question was, will it be canceled? Ah. And should we go? Oh boy, yeah. that's, I, I try to not take medical questions. <laughs> COVID, COVID so I, would not, I would not want to advise you on that, but let's put it this way. Whatever the answer is to that, you will know by the end of July. And I think that it's like, don't be in a hurry to get to the train station till you know what train you're going to take. Well, exactly. That's what I was thinking when you were saying all that. It was pretty funny. Yeah. And it's it was like, funny. With the color blue too, I thought it was very, very funny because when Susan interviewed me on Monday, she asked me what my favorite color was and I said blue. So oh. aren't you impressive? <laughs> it must you have been still on your mind. You didn't, you didn't tell me anything about that, did you, Susan? No. Oh. So maybe what I was seeing, I was seeing the sun and the moon in blue. Maybe that's the ocean, the ocean trip. The, uh, you know, being on the ocean and seeing the moon and, and the sun. And I the think flower, I, that could work into it too. Where are you, where, you're going to Italy? And then where are you ending up? Susan, I can't hear her. She's on mute. Oh. You can push the space bar, Adrian, and it should work. There we, oh, yeah, I keep doing the little, yeah, sorry. So where are you going to end up? In Fort Lauderdale. Hmm. I, I think, think that's going to be the problem, Fort Lauderdale. Watch, watch for flowers. <laughs> And I, you know, overall, I, since I did see the sun and the moon and a blue like the ocean, I would say there's a good chance that it's going to happen. But you have to be patient. Yeah. Go ahead and make your plans and time will pass. Okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Thank Adrian. You. Yeah, no worries. That was fun. Okay. Okay, so who's, who's coming next? Okay, it looks like we've got a next one. Okay, we have another. People are telling me they'd like to join, but they're actually at work or they're not in a place where somebody could, um, um, you know, be videoed right at this moment. Hmm. So hold on. We have another person joining us right now, you know, because I got to sign into Zoom and all that stuff. So that's, so you guys sign, sign into Zoom. If you want to, be next, let me know, send me a private message, it's easier. Keep meditating, Mark. Okay, I'm already fully in tune. Meditating makes me sleepy, so, you know. 
everything in its time. Should I sing a song or something? <laughs> I don't want to ruin the mood, the ambiance. The mood? The mood, the ambiance. <clears throat> Why is it taking so long? Because people have to, I don't want everybody here at once. Oh. So one person at a time and they have to, here we are, here's the next. Okay. I'll get the next person ready. <coughs> it's those spirits. Hello. Oh, it's Rob. Hi, Rob. From San Francisco, apparently. <laughs> He's floating. He's also on mute. I can't hear him. He's on mute. Hold on. Everybody gets muted when they come in, so they got to unmute. That. I wish there was a way to change that. There we go. He's floating. Okay, now, apparently. the thing is, I do... <laughs> it's my spirit. <laughs> I do know Rob, but I'm not... We didn't plan anything, right? Right, Rob? No, and, and I'm actually sorry. We had an awful electrical storm here, and I was offline for almost all the time. I just saw Adrienne, but I didn't even get to hear 10% of what, what she said or what you said. So, okay, and the well, first me, one I missed me... totally. So, I, I don't actually know what's going on. Okay, what's going on is I'm doing like blind readings. I'm, I'm not using any tarot cards, I'm not using any stones, I'm not using any apparatus of any kind more or less in other words i'm not i'm not doing readings as a, as a normal psychic would okay uh so that's why the accuracy of what i say who knows but that's why this is a test and an experiment and at the end of the hour i'm going to explain what i did and i'm going to allow people to take it or leave it so uh the main idea is as you're as you're watching what I'd like you to do is focus on a specific question. Uh, it could be anything you want, but the idea is if you don't, it helps both of us. If you focus, I can focus too. Okay. okay. And if, if, you, if you don't have a specific question, then when I'm done, none of what I'm saying will make any sense because you haven't made those connections of people. Okay, I can make a specific. I was actually wondering something while well, I was Well, don't say to... it, okay. though. No, no, no. no don't. I... I want you to... Wonder is very important, but I just this... want you to think about it, and I'll tell you what I see. So let me just concentrate for a moment here. The first word that comes to my mind is illusion. And then I'm also seeing a a visual picture of a sale tag, you know, like when you go to the store and it says sale in red and it's on the tag. So it, 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 this, this is a little iffy because it could mean go for it. And that the sale tag, the sale tag in this, in this sense almost seems like a little bit of a warning, like it's too good to be true. And the word illusion tells me you've got to think through the, the whole thing before you make a leap and purchase or commit to this, whatever it is. So if there's something that you're thinking about and you're trying to figure a way to, what's the word I'm looking for? You're trying to figure a, a way to uh, come to a conclusion that's positive and not waste your time. Just remember that just because something's for sale doesn't, doesn't mean you have to buy it. It could be an illusion. That's it. Did I answer your question? Not in any way I can get at it. That's Maybe okay. in time. Maybe in time. It'll come to you. It'll no, be it doesn't better. matter. It's really clairvoyance is about right now or the future. It's, it's not about the past. So if it's not something you can connect to in this moment, then, then don't worry about it. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. You'll find out later why, okay? Oh, so oh. Nothing, nothing that you can make a conclusion about, right? So I'm not going to ask any questions like, are you thinking of buying a new car or anything? No, that's done. We're done. We're going to the next person. Thanks, okay. Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for being here for us. Okay. I think we have some males that's about to join us. 
people are, one person said he wants to join, but he was in bed <laughs> watching and he doesn't want to have the Zoom call over his, while he's in bed, so he has to get out of bed. So I think we have another one. Who is about to sign in? So far, we're not doing so good, are we? I think a lot of this is going to make sense to them later. Too late. <laughs> I think they're going to they're going to realize what you say. I know and think it's true. Okay. But the thing is, it's now and it's in the future, but it'll be too late. But I'll I'll do the best I can. Yeah, you know, it's incred incredibly draining. It's incredibly draining. So an hour should be. <laughs> Can you see the sweat on my brow? <laughs> rivers, rivers of sweat dripping. Let me dab my forehead here. There we go. <clears throat> People are, are reluctant to go on camera is what they're telling me. <clears throat> but it, this is, Mark's gentle. It's, I'm sure it'll be fine. Not necessarily. Well, okay. We don't know. Telling it like it is. Here comes the next. Okay. Letting him in. It's Richard. Richard. Hello. Hi. Now, I know Richard, okay? I could I could make a lot of suppositions based on what I know about him already. So this is where this is where it clouds the the clairvoyance gets clouded by uh, how can I say it, uh, sliding backwards in the past. And this is not about the past. This is about the present and the future. So okay. even, though I, even though I know him, uh, and you've been listening about how I'd like you to have a specific question. I just had to tune out for a second to get on here again, but. Okay, yeah, the idea all is. Right, yes, I have a specific question in my mind. Okay. Very good. I don't want you to say it. Just think it. Get rid of all the other stuff that, that's going on, and I will tell you what I'm feeling. Um, I see a crossroads. I see something like this, a crossroads. And normally that's open. You go one way, you go the other way, but you're standing at a stop sign. So I think you're you're in this, in, in answer to this question, you are about to take a step forward, but you're feeling unsure about it. And I also see the word coincidence. Uh, I don't know why, but there's whatever's going on in answer to your question. If you refer to a coincidence, the most recent coincidence that had you say, wow, it's a coincidence, nothing paranormal, nothing uh, supernatural. That will give you the answer what you need uh, to, to, to move across the street or whatever it is you need. It's almost as if you're waiting for some sort of information to come to you. And that's, that's what I do. So if you're hesitating, what am I trying to think of? Uh, the worst thing to do is not do it, okay? If you're worried about it, there is no, there is no danger. There's no traffic crossing the crossroads. The worst thing for you to do is not do it and wonder, what, wonder later what would have happened if you did, okay? So I don't know how the coincidence works into it, but uh, we all have them, nothing supernatural there. But for some reason, it feels like that is, is got you in this situation right now. And if you just listen to it and say, no matter how crazy it was, say, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Then you're going to be fine. That's it. <laughs> that make any sense? I'm still processing that. I'm, I'm, I've, well, I was hesitating to do something a short while ago. Yeah. One way or the other. I could have done this or I could have done that. Yeah. And I'm still yet to see how that bears out. Okay, so that, so I'm going to say that it's going to turn out better than you anticipated. If you had stood still at the stop sign, 
you would have missed a great opportunity. Well, that's it. I didn't. I I, I didn't stop at the stop sign, but and I, but I was hesitating. That's for a that's while. a stop sign. <laughs> In other words, there's a reason, there's a reason why you hesitated. I still don't know how the coinc past or present coincidence, very recent coincidence plays into this, uh, but maybe you'll find out about it in a couple of days or something. All right. I hope so. Hey. That's great. All right. Thanks, Richard. Thank Take you, care. Mark. Oops, I forgot I was muted. Okay, Richard. Thank you so much, Richard. We have, we're going to be joined in a moment. We're going to be joined in a moment by another gentleman who is here now, Robin Canton from Montreal. So, okay. Hey, Robin. He's just can connecting. To, it's connecting to audio right now. He can hear you, but you can't hear him because it, okay, okay. here we go. Well, I'm just hoping that you uh, heard what we were talking about before about getting a specific question in mind. Uh, the, the more specific your question, I can hopefully be specific with what I'm seeing. Can you hear me? I don't think he can hear me. He's here. Can you hear us, Robin? Yeah, I, I can. There's two things happening at once. Okay. Ooh, maybe that's his question. <laughs> okay, so, so, yes. So, you have you been listening to what we've done for the past 20 minutes or whatever yes okay so you understand if you have a question in your mind what i'm going to try and do is tell you what sort of pictures i see and it's not directed towards your past it is now or possibly something in the future okay all right <clears throat> I see a cactus. <laughs> I see a green cactus, and it looks like a desert in the background. Very dry, very, very warm, very, uh, uh, it's a desert. And then I see the word and the, get the feeling mad. Like you are either angry about something or somebody is, angry with you, or there's a lot of different interpretations of the word mad. It could be maybe there's something crazy going on that's really not making sense to you, like me <laughs> right now. Or it could be just you trying to uh, process some sort of uh, neighbor or person or somebody who seems angry or crazy, and you are, you are being very calm about it and and maybe maybe this has to do this cactus in this background that i'm seeing could have to do with uh a break away i mean do you have cactus around where you live i'm not supposed to ask questions but i don't not think so where I live. not in montreal but there's one right there really <laughs> okay. yes i can see cacti <laughs> there we go uh, but you're not angry about it, are you? Not about the cacti, no, no. But you are angry about something. I'm That's all right. I'm not supposed to ask about questions. something. So I, I keep I keep doing this. It's a force <laughs> of heaven. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to go with what I saw: a cactus and something. Somebody is angry or mad. The, the M A D. Now I. They could, they could even be somebody's initials. I, I can't be that specific on it because it's really an emotional feeling. It's not a material thing that, that, is, that necessarily affects everything. So uh, I'm just going to leave it there. So did that, make, did that make some sense? A little bit? I need to, I need to work a little, but kind of, yes. <laughs> We'll, we'll take kind of, kind of will work. Would you, Susan, mark that down, kind of. It's, see, I, I'd like to bring up one important point. All these people who I've given readings to so far are skeptics. 
And it's not very likely that they're going to make the leaps that, uh, I don't know, the average person who doesn't have any uh, critical thinking going on. So, and that's good. I'm really happy about that because it, that's just a good thing, okay? But really, just, just to back up for a second, uh, there's no way I could know you were, had a cactus outside your window, is there? That's true. Mm -hmm. Then okay. no way whatsoever. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. And at the end of the show, I'm going to explain. All will be revealed, okay? So we'll probably do like three or four more, and then, then I, will, uh, I will explain. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Thank Robin. Thank you, Mark. Okay, take care. Okay, so we have, we're going to be joined by a woman, mm -hmm. I think right next. People, hurry up. If you're going to do this, just a few more. A few more? Just a few more. So they better, time goes really fast. So if people want to start lining up, send me a private message ASAP now. And I'll give you the link to join the Zoom call. Okay. I've got two people waiting for one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse okay, me. here we come. All right. This is this is Wendy. Hi, Wendy. She's Can connecting to the audio right now. It takes a second for the for the audio to connect. And she's on her iPhone. She's pushing buttons. <coughs> She's trying to talk. Hi, Wendy. Okay, it's connecting to audio. Oh, there. I Hi, Wendy. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm okay. How about yourself? I'm really good. And in fact, okay. I, I was having trouble thinking of a question, but I heard you asking that other man a question. I was actually just pruning some succulents, so maybe it was like you were precognitivizing. There you go. The, the whole thing about the cactuses. Yeah. Well, I think having one outside his window while I'm talking to him is good enough. You know. <laughs> so you, you have a you have a, a specific question for me? A little bit. You know, I try to stay upbeat, and you know, it's it's a little bit. Um, I have some unpopular opinions, and if I express them, I think people get upset and pissed off. Wait, don't tell me anything. You're not supposed to give me any hints about anything. Okay, <laughs> then I will sort of, I will. No, I will. not sort of, not sort of. You have to, of all the questions that you have spinning around in your mind right now, focus on the one that is the most important and let all the rest of them go on to the back burner. That, that's the only way this will hopefully have any meaning or significance. Otherwise, at the end, you'll say, you know, I didn't really get anything from that, okay? So just think it and don't overthink it. <clears throat> there you go. All right. Okay. I get the word end, okay? Something is at the end. You're right in the middle of something that is ending or ended. Uh, and I also see, and it's really weird because it's on its side. I see a, like a shape like a Z, like this. Or if we turned it this way, it would be an N. Or what I'm feeling like is it's almost like a maze. Like, you know, when you look down on a maze and you see the pathways through there, it is a shape like this. Like you are traveling in a Z or an N shape. So you're not really, even though the word I saw was end, you're still on some sort of journey. And I also see red and blue. Seems like an obvious thing for right now in the world, but 
on, on one side of this shape is all red and on the bottom below is blue. So I'm not gonna ask any questions. I'm just gonna say there is more, even though something ended or is, is ending right now, that there is, you're still in this, this sort of feeling like you're in a maze, but you're gonna come out better than you anticipate. It's just gonna take a little time. Does that make sense? Yes, actually it does in a lot of ways. And I'll talk about it at the end if I can. Okay, very good. Thanks, Wendy. It was nice to see you, Mark. Nice to see you too. Take care. You too, kiddo. All right. Wendy's great. Okay, we have one more. This is Steve. Excuse me. The spirits, they come no, into the you. Candle flames are making oh. <laughs> it's a common problem with psychics. They, uh, <clears throat> He's having a di technical difficulties, he says, the person is yeah, coming in. in my throat. <clears throat> so this is the final one, right? Um, I'm not sure. He's having technical difficulties. Let's see if he figures it out. <laughs> la, la, la. La, la, la. Everybody getting ready for 4th of July? I hate 4th of July. It's so violent. <sighs> the rocket's red glare. I just don't get it. Do you have anything to say, Susan? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. <laughs> I could make faces for a while. <laughs> you could do. You could do shadow puppets. I don't. I never got into shadow puppets. Should we just move on to somebody else? I am. I'm waiting. I'm trying to see who I had. Steve was lined up, but he's having problems getting in. So hold on. Either he or somebody else can step up. So while I'm here, uh, <clears throat> people who I've talked to, I hope you're going to stay around because what we're going to do is, is show you uh, how some of these things are done and, and how they can be played up or played down, especially in the media. Uh, there's Carmen. A, section, a section in my book, Psychic Blues, about when I worked on the radio. And uh, I got some of the biggest hits I ever had. And that, that phone board would light up. And all I did is use uh, this method, which is concrete. So it's not really, I'm not really just making this up, but it, it is amazing how it can work uh, in the right, in the right situation. So if you read my book, uh, just kind of review in your mind the uh, waterfall and the red painted toenails, and you'll understand where we're headed. And just waterfall? Was there a waterfall involved in that too? I said a waterfall. Oh, I sorry. Red painted, painted red toenails. Sorry, I was reading the comments. People were writing. The guy I worked with, who was a DJ on that show, was a total skeptic. And when that, when I got that hit, he could not. There was no hint for him to follow, and uh, it really blew him away. And it it showed me how this is a powerful tool to use. Uh, in a lot of ways. It's a, a psychological tool. It's also a, it gets people to think. You used to do this a lot on the radio, right? It's what? You used to do a lot of this on the radio. This was your... Not, well, no. What, what it would be is if I didn't have, if I didn't have any other tool available or I, I had enough opportunity to be able to switch different things as I was, you know, on each, each show... And this is one that I just had in my bag of tricks. 
do they still do these shows where people call in and they talk to a psychic? I have psychic? no idea. I, I, I don't doubt it, especially right now with all the bullshit that's going on. Carmen asked if you would tell a joke. Tell a joke? Well, once one time when I was working at uh, the Comedy and Magic Club, and I was working with Robin Williams, and uh, <laughs> I asked him if he'd go up on stage and tell a psychic joke. So he kind of looked at me, and I, I thought maybe he just thought I was a jerk. And then he went up on stage, and he says, I've been asked to do a psychic joke. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you had to be there. That was for you, Carmen. Just special yeah. for Carmen. Well, I don't know if we're going to have any more people. Well, then let's just cut to the chase, then. Um, is anybody else trying to join? I this is your last chance. For there's this a, particular show. Remember, this is session one. Session one. Yeah. It takes about, okay, here comes Carmen. Oh, here comes Steve. All right, here's Steve. Okay. Steve. Wait, it takes a second for him to load. Hold on. Steve got out of bed to do this. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. I better be good then. Well, Richard Saunders was just barely awake in Australia. Well, that's interesting, but... That's an interesting picture. Yeah, I don't is know. Is that Steve? Which which one is Steve? <laughs> I think it's a picture from a movie or a book or something. Hold on, he's joining. He, he was the person who was having technical difficulties. Why? I don't like doing stuff. It has to, if it's done in person, it's so much better. Yeah, so yeah. Better. Carmen and Wendy and Rob all liked your your cart your uh, joke. Absolutely yeah. true. True story. Robin Williams was so much funny to be backstage with. He was just hilarious. He was always on? No. Oh, look, there's Steve. There's Steve. Hello, Steve. Thank you for Hi, getting Steve. out of bed. He's Can you hear me? Looks like there's some problems. Well, that's okay. All he has to do is concentrate and you can... You can oh, work. he has to be able to hear me. I think he's just having slow internet, but it looks like he can hear you. You can hear? Thumbs up. I can't hear a thing. I'm, uh, there is. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. It's breaking up a little bit, but. There okay. we go. I can, I can hear you. All right. So, Steve, Good. have you been listening to the rest of the show? I don't I don't think he's gonna be able to hear me, Susan. He's breaking He can up. hear you. He just it's gonna be hard for him to interact with you. Oh. Well, Go ahead and give him his reading and that way he can he can all listen. Right. Here's to here's what I'm getting. I'm gonna do this really fast. So you just shake your head. You can hear me, right? Can you hear me? Yes. I don't, I don't know what's, what, yeah, yeah, he said, okay. Yep. All right. I see, okay, mother and child, a woman holding a baby. That's yeah. what I, that's what I'm What happened? Boy, this is really tough. You know? I muted. I muted you, Steve, because your connection's so bad. But Mark, he can hear. He can hear you. Go ahead. He can't hear me. He's shaking his head. Now. Well, he will when we get the video live again. He'll be able to hear it whenever we're whenever we. He'll be able to look back on Facebook and and watch. Okay, he's saying forget it. I think. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so mother and child. That's what I'm getting. I'm a woman holding a child. That's what I saw visually. And I also saw the word debt, okay? So <laughs> debt, that's, and it's not always the most positive feeling, but it could be something that is going to resolve itself in the next week or two, all right? So if you're having money problems or there's a debt issue, it has something to do with the, uh, uh, 
two people, okay? Mother and child, I don't know if it's your uh, mother or your wife or girlfriend and a child. And I think that it is all going to even out. If you're feeling, if you're feeling stressed about it, there's no need to worry about it because it's going to be taken care of. I feel like there's a third party who's going to come in and smooth this out. Okay. So I don't, I don't want you to worry about money. I want you to relax and take care of personal relationships. That's the most important thing. If you do that, then everything will work out. He looks totally confused. Well, we have, he's trying to, he's also got his, uh, he's on another, um, he tried to sign in with a different account. Oh, so I think okay. we ought to just maybe take one more and move on, Susan. I think that's all we've got. Hold on. Thank you, Steve. Re-listen to this in a minute. Thanks. Okay. I, I mean, really, that's like, that's like totally shooting in the dark. <laughs> well, you couldn't, you couldn't accurate. get any... The most yeah. accurate reading was probably the last one, but we may never. Because know. he couldn't give you any feedback either. Well, I don't want feedback. I know, I but he couldn't because his, I, his connection see, was right? so bad. Yeah. Oh, Richard Saunders wanted to let you know. Yeah. That you were talking about crosswords with him. And he said Cross, that. Crossroads. Crossroads. And he says, as you were talking to him, or as I was listening to Paul McCartney playing Crossroads while making up my mind. So Paul McCartney was playing the song Crossroads. I love it when that happens. Okay. How do you explain that, you skeptics, you? <laughs> yeah. You know, it only takes one or two of those to sell the show. And and Steve says that he that there were bad spirits in the system. That's what yes, was, there definitely were bad something spirits. was trying to keep him for something was trying to keep the the reading from getting to him. They were fighting to make sure yeah. he didn't get that message. Yeah. And then Rob Palmer says, for the record, my question was, where is my cat hiding? And it was likely under a couch, bed, or basement from the thunderstorm. Yeah, but he, are, see, this, this won't work if you already know the answer. <laughs> see, I got I gotta an out for everything. That's how it works, but okay. And then, you know, also if they have skeptical uh, thoughts in their mind, you know, it's, what is it, a goat? They're, they're, isn't that what they, they say is that you're, you're not open enough? Well. Oh, and we, Rob says he didn't know where his cat All was. of that, that's a whole other show, but are you ready to? I think so, because I think everybody who's willing to be on, on the camera has, has come and gone already. Not exactly filling an arena, am I? <laughs> Well, we didn't really explain to them what you were going to do and that they needed to be like dressed with clothing on and, you know. So much for the TV show. And, and some people are also at work and they can't yeah. necessarily do this That's at okay. work. But they're we'll, listening. We'll they just can't be else. on the camera. All right. So should I give the uh, reveal? Yeah, I, I think everybody, there's about a 12 second delay out here from here. I think go ahead and talk to them about okay, what you're so. doing. Uh, most of you who are skeptics uh, are aware of how people make connections for you. Uh, and you can make the most outrageous, outlandish statements, not necessarily with skeptics, but skeptics can be prone to the same situation if, if you make it random enough, because you, you're likely to hit somewhere. So the average person doesn't filter very well. The average person doesn't go into uh, a psychic entertainment demonstration with all of their critical thinking engines working. They, they are there for a reason and they paid plenty of money to be able to experience the wonderment of the cactus. Okay, so uh, one or two or three uh, good hits using this method imagine if I was on the radio, gets people to wonder, you know, it, it makes them say, well, you know, the rest of that was bullshit, but the cactus and what else did I get a hit on? Crossroads. <laughs> Crossroads. It's an amazing effect. I don't even know if, if uh, uh, science has a term for it, but here's, 
here's what I decided to use to make this happen, okay? What I needed was a random, as random as I could find, selection of words and images. And they can, cannot be controlled by me in any way. So what I have, you couldn't, you couldn't see them, but I bought these many years ago. I think they are called uh, dream cards or something like that. What happened to the Zoom? Are we still on? Yeah, we're still on. I see a little Zoom thing. Attendee, post attendee. What does that mean? I don't know. You're fine. Okay. Anyway, so these are, there's a set of word cards. You can see, I don't know if you can see this, but the word cards have a word on the top. Okay. So here's, and then there's also a selection of painted image cards that are totally random images. So for example, this is the one that came up for Wendy. This was the image and this was the word. So the idea is you're supposed to pick a random card and pick a random image and then put them together like this. And then all I do is describe those to the person. Wendy has a comment too. She says, that, she says, I, you know, I'm a hardcore skeptic, but my brain was trying so hard to make Mark's answers fit my thoughts. And Rob yeah. says, me too. It may have worked if I wasn't asked to think of a specific question. There are certainly other questions Mark's comments could have applied that to so that I could have connected with that. Right. But see, the, the, one of the basis, one of the basis of a skept, uh, skeptic reading, a psychic reading <laughs> is that when you, when you prime and suggest to a person to focus on a specific individual issue in their life, they generally, you get, you get a better, better average of, of hits because if I showed you a picture and you didn't have any question or anything, it's likely that you just would say, well, I didn't, that didn't make any sense to me at all. But if you have a specific question and we both start with that, then you're more the, the average person, let's say that, not skeptics necessarily. You're more apt to, how can I put it? Make a connection. So no matter how outrageous it is, you'll say, oh yeah, like, like people have done afterwards. They say, well, yeah, that Paul McCartney song was on the radio or whatever, because most people want the psychic to be right. They don't want them to be wrong. So I'm kind of like, in this case with skeptics, I'm entertaining people against their will. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, because we're gonna pass this on to other people who will understand. So again, here is, um, let me get a good one. Here's the so Janice says, Janice says, you're more likely to want to find an answer to the question. Yes. Yes, You're, you will you will make those connections because otherwise you have to admit to yourself that you've wasted all this time and money if you go to a psychic in person. So here is the here is the cactus picture of the cactus for Robin. Yeah, for Robin, and and here is the word which was mad. So it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm just pulling these random cards from this pack of cards. But it's all about storytelling, and this is yeah. a skill every that. Once in a while, bing, you get a hit because people, even against their will, with skeptics, will will turn to. What happened to my lighting? No, you're there. <laughs> a little darker. Even against their will, they'll they'll just say, "Well, maybe." Okay, and this is the danger: is well, maybe. This is just a random bunch of picture cards. See all of them. And here's a random bunch of word cards. Okay, so this is particularly effective when I was on the radio. And I love radio because on the radio, people can't see what you're doing. They can only hear what you're doing. So you have an opportunity to uh, use whatever visual or uh, word things that, that literally you're forcing to come to mind. So. I will say I would probably have gotten a higher percentage of hits, uh, just a general audience, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Here's the crossroads. There's the stop sign. 
That and was Richard. Person, yeah, the purple person standing at the, uh, see how they fit together nicely, uh, and coincidence. So everybody oh, has it's a confidence. confidence. Is that what it is? <laughs> wow, I couldn't even read it. I should have my glasses on. Yeah, it says <laughs> confidence. So anyway, what it ended up is I said, you should go ahead and take that, cross that road and take that chance. So confidence, no wonder I couldn't get anything going with coincidence. But doesn't matter. <laughs> coincidence, confidence, whatever, whatever the, the sitter decides fits in with it, will go ahead and say, yeah, I did have a coincidental thing. And it has to do with, uh, I don't know, a stop sign. Who, who knows? This is, so, uh, this is about somebody could do this with a lot of skill. Because what you're doing is storytelling. Here's the mother and child. Uh, that was for Steve. Yeah. And then here's the, uh, this was the hurry with this, the, blue, the blue ocean. Oh, this is Adrian. Yeah, and the sun and the, the flower. See the flower down there. So hurry, hurry and this, this card. You make that happen. Yeah, it is storytelling. All this stuff is storytelling. It doesn't necessarily have to make any sense because you're getting paid by the hour. <laughs> or the minute. And certainly the psychic doesn't care or the performer doesn't care. All they're trying to do is get in a half hour show, two or three hits. Like the cactus, the crossroads, what else did we have? Oh, not uh, not you got Adrian's blue, favorite color is blue. Yeah, but that's, you, she said, I told, I told Susan my favorite color was blue, so it would be better if she hadn't told anybody. And that's why an audience of strangers is more likely to right he's come up with another connection she says mark said red and blue and an end my birthday is friday so this is the end of an annual cycle the red and blue is likely red white and blue which is fourth of july ah see that now that's almost a complete reading that that's good enough good enough to uh to uh satisfy the average person so what I've shared with you is just a simple tool. I, I bought these cards like 25 years ago. I don't even know if they're available. I can't find the instruction book, okay? <laughs> so I'm probably not even using them the way they're supposed to be used in a serious reading. But for me, it works. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a visual and combine, combining a visual and a word. You could do it with index cards, you know? You could just, or postcards, you know, I, uh -huh. I, I was almost afraid I wouldn't be able to find these cards. They're out in the garage somewhere. So <laughs> I was thinking I would just use a pile of random postcards and the dictionary, same thing, okay? So we're more alike than we are different. Adrian says that her hit was with the ocean also was on the card. Yeah, so I mean- and She was talking about now, taking a trip on, the, on a cruise. Yeah, now you're, now you're starting to take the information and it's sinking in. I will, you know, what comes to my mind is when I'm giving you the reading, since you're basically a skeptical, rational audience, a lot of you are from the get go resistant. And you're not going to give me an inch, which is good, but I sort of wish we had had some stupid people too. <laughs> Rob's got a question for you. He says, I could see the question from a sitter. How could it be a coincidence that Mark could have realized what was going to be on the radio? I'm not sure I understand your question, Rob. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't get it either. I think that he's saying, how could you, if you're on the radio with somebody and you can't get feedback from them, maybe, is that what you're trying to say? Um... There's about a 15 second delay before he can hear this. Well, yeah, I mean, when you're on the radio, you, you, for a while I was able to get feedback, but after a while they stopped doing that. They could only, and in their case, they were asking a question and I gave an answer. So, and if you read, if you get my book, Psychic Blues, either the audio book or the published book, you'll read the section where, uh, 
I was able to get, it was a picture of uh, painted red toenails and a waterfall. And I pulled that one and the woman was completely destroyed because she said, I was just hiking with my boyfriend and we went to a waterfall and I stopped to paint my toenails red. <laughs> Rob says that the best of all the readings you did today was the one where you got Richard Saunders was listening. Now, remember, this is how it's repeated back. So if, if you guys were a room of believers, you would say, I had a, a, psych I had a reading with a psychic today, and he told me that I was listening to a Beatles song called Crossroads. Well, no, that wouldn't have been so good because I might have heard it. Well, what I'm saying is they make this connection instead of you going on for a while and then connecting with some father figure and then you've mentioned a bunch of names and maybe there's a Bob or something in there when it's repeated back to their friends and family they say I was with a psychic today and he was talking to my grandfather Bob and there's no way he could have known that oh, I really, see but in reality what it was is that you said a father figure there was a bob somewhere in there that you got eventually and like with wendy you know if wendy wasn't a critical thinker she may have said to somebody i was talking to a psychic on zoom today and he knew it was my birthday coming right. up and yeah. he knew that that was going to be a change for me in life and by the way wendy happy birthday early happy birthday on friday but maybe he was able to so so when we tell people I have evidence that psychics are real because they told me this, this, and this, I say, can I see the, uh, can I hear the audio? Can I see the reading? Can I, right. you know, because people, and they people say, no, no, it really it. happened. Yeah. It's because we're storytellers and we like to. Um, and the more people who hear that story, the stronger the event becomes till finally the third person telephone, like the telephone game is saying, yeah, he, I don't know. He made my cat levitate. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also, you know, possibility, not in this case, but we could have had ringers. I mean, you get, if you get That's somebody, the easiest way. yeah, if you get somebody on the call that is like, uh, either you know them well enough to be able to say, oh, it's Wendy's birthday coming up. And you say, I see uh, that you're going to be having. Yeah, see, that's, that's another problem with knowing everybody. If but you, you have totally vague. random people, it's better because I, I feel like the sitters in this case, like Richard and Wendy and other people who I know, uh, it's obvious for them to think I'm just using some information that Susan told me or that I <laughs> heard about them on Facebook or whatever. So it's not, it doesn't ring as true as if it was a bunch of random people who I did not know anything about you know, like Joe the plumber or whatever, you know, because it doesn't matter. These cards are going to give me this kind of passport to get in there where I, where I want to get. Uh, and, and where I want to get is that person making connections. They're saying, well, I'm sitting here. He's supposed to be psychic. He might my fault if I don't get it. Skeptics are like, eh, especially if you've paid money, get this guy out of my life. So, as I say many times, is it's the artifice of what is going on that interests me, not whether it's real or not. It's just getting people to think, getting people to reassess the way they automatically will leap into something that is, has been, it's like a trap that is set. So that's why we wanted to try this. Just not, it didn't matter whether we were right or wrong. It was the, it was the, the, the one-off things that people thought about later and made the connection. So in a way with skeptics, it was a, it was a, uh, what's the word? It took a while for them to, to get on the right side of the picture or the wrong side, depending on how you look at it. So they, they made their, they made their calls or whatever later saying, well, yeah, you know, that crossroads thing, there was something. It, there. it, it oh, is. It. The, the way they go about rationalizing it, especially like I say, if you've spent money on this, they don't want to have wasted their money. So they would- Or time, or time. They're going to try to make a connection because humans yeah. make connections. Yeah. That's what we yeah. do. We're social humans. We want to have that 
feeling of, of connection. What was Dave Thomas's, the very first one you did? Because you didn't show the picture for that. Because uh, he wasn't able to stay around, remember? Oh, that was first Waste. One. That was Waste, I think. And it was a picture of the back of somebody's head. That looks or like a light bulb. I know, it looks like a light. That's what I said. Oh, it yeah, it is. A blonde person's back of their the head. Back of their head. Yeah, so it was somebody walking away, I believe. And but I bet you're thinking always... about it now, and it's making sense. <laughs> I don't want anyone to lose any sleep, all right? These are just <laughs> pieces of cardboard. <laughs> you could use any kind of... I say this in my book, you can use any, anything as long as you have some sort of system that makes it, you know, default uh, reason. Well, Rob wants to know what his picture was, Rob Palmer. He wants to know what his picture was? He wants to know what his picture was. Which he one forgot was already? No, he didn't know what his, he hadn't seen his picture. Oh, he hadn't seen his picture? No. I'm trying to find it here so dark in here. Was it the sail and the illusion? I think it was this one. Picture of a sail tag. Right? It's, oh. And the, word, and the word is illusion. It's coming out backwards from where no, I No, no, it's not. fine. We could read it. It's only yeah. backwards to you. What else did you, what other? So I like this one. I like the sale tag. That's, that's a great one. I, I remember using that several times. It's like, if you've been thinking about buying a new TV, get out there and get it. Cause you're never <laughs> going to have a greater opportunity than right now. You know? Yeah. Rob says that was his. Wendy yeah. says years ago, Mark did a reading at a holiday party at CFI. Even though I totally knew about cold reading i internalized what mark said that got me through a very tough time in my life it's like our brains making sense out of random information there you go that's all i'm demonstrating sometimes people it's, it's need to talk to somebody it's a worthless skill you know <laughs> and uh rob says that he may have to sell his car or his cat oh he's going to sell his cat <laughs> And Robin, hey, Robin has posted a picture of his cactus outside by his window. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that is so funny. Let me share. So now you'll Let see me share the next, everybody. In when, the next following days, all these things will be true. Okay, hold on. I'm going to share this picture of the cactus that Robin just put up. Can you guys see it? Here's this cacti. <laughs> <laughs> Not that's pretty, exactly. that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's not exactly what I imagined, but it is a cactus and he Two. was looking right at it. So imagine if he wasn't a skeptic and there's, there is no way I could have known that. Say, so we, Susan and I hear all the time, people say, there's no way in the world he could have known that. Well, it's not necessary to know about it. It's, it's, just playing the odds. Well, what are the odds that somebody has a cactus or a plant right next to them at work or at home? You know, I don't you know, know, but if I had said sure it's I high. see a cactus and I see the word meow, that would have been much better. Okay, so Paul, Paula is being the, the skeptic that she is, and she's saying those are succulents, not cactus. <laughs> right. Whatever, right. Paula. <laughs> yeah, she's right. Te technically, she's right, but... This points out an interesting thing because I think people they don't get that technical when they're when they're trying to understand how I was able to see that because I I could have said well no I couldn't have said succulent but you know succulent cactus close enough you, you know? could have said those I, words I see yeah. I see the letter B uh, is it Billy is it Bob is it Bo I mean you know it it it's People make the connection because they want to. So Robin They're says not, they don't think like Paula. Paula does. Paula is an exception to the rule Ooh, because Robin Paula, <laughs> she'll she'll Paula's an exceptional person. She will take mm -hmm. it and parse it out and reimagine. Or what is the word I'm looking for? It's back engineering. You know, that's what skepticism does: is you back engineer it or you think it through on a totally different level, which is rational and 
you know, that's not a cactus, that's a succulent. So Robin has said in the comments, he says, I defer to my wife in plant things and she calls them cactus. That's very significant, thank you. I'll take all the credit. <laughs> Because this is called, we call this in the psychic world, the piggyback effect. Sometimes what I see bounces from one person and goes to another person and makes more sense to that person. So, uh, right. Mark, I've seen people getting a reading from someone like Matt Frazier or something like that. And he's good. Oh, he's really good. But what he does is when, let's say he pulls somebody up. And they're so excited that, that they're about to get a reading and he says something like, I'm getting a father figure. And they immediately go to whomever it is that they wanted to know, hear from, you know, their brother, right. their uncle, whatever, their grandfather, their father. They immediately go there. And as the reading goes through, let's say he's reading them for 10 minutes, there may be a lot of stuff that does not fit. I mean, even like they might say something like the military and you're going, no, my family has nothing to do with the military or they would they say, just pass right over that. Yeah. It, but in their mind, the person who's being read is so excited about having this connection to their father or whomever that they're going to overlook anything that doesn't hit. They're going to continue right. nodding like, yes, you have a connection because if they know that if they say, no, that doesn't seem to fit. no, no, the psychic may say, oh, I'm not supposed to be talking to you. I'm supposed to be talking to that other person over right. there. Right. And so you've just shut off your, your connection to your father and he's unlikely to come back to you. So you're going to try your darndest to assume, to keep saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, because you don't, you're hoping that maybe somewhere in that he's going to say whatever it is that you're hoping to hear or, or that you that you that, that you that you have set in your mind that you're going to get a validation for so the people in the audience that's watching it looks really really real because you're sitting there go they're watching you go yes 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 uh-huh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when Did i tell a famous story about the sure. sideshow sideshow uh gypsy woman this is a method i learned from uh E. Raymond Carlisle, who was a medium at uh, Magic Castle, who used to be a very, very dear friend of mine. And then when I started doing skeptical activism, he became one of my enemies. He just recently passed away, but he knew a lot of stuff. And one of the methods the sideshow gypsies used to use is if you can imagine the tent that the psychic is sitting in, and it's open in the front, it has a flap, and she's sitting at a little table and she's facing outward towards the open flap. And there are people lined up on the outside of the tent waiting to talk to Madame Zara or whatever her name is. So what would happen is the person would come in and they would sit down in the chair so that what people are seeing who are standing in line is, is that person's back and the psychic facing that person. So, if the psychic was starting to have a hard time and the person was not getting it or the gypsy could see by the expression on the person's face that she wasn't getting anywhere and that it, it, this was turning into an ugly reading, what she would do is she'd lean forward like very confidential and she'd get right up to the person's face and she would say, can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? And the person, of course, on the other side would go, yeah. I can hear what you're saying. Yeah, nodding their head. Now, people standing in line would look through the tent flap and they'd see this person going, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. They'd, they'd say to each other, man, look at this. She's saying yes to everything. This, this person's saying she must be really good. I'm gonna wait longer than I planned because you can clearly see that she's, she's really good. Don't you love that? I love that. I mean, don't don't you don't you just think who thought of this and how did it how did it become a tradition that it did? Nowadays you don't see that sort of thing, but there are other ways to do that, you know, other technical things which that's another show. 
Robin, anyway, Robin can said, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Sure. Yeah. Robin said that um, the picture that I shared of the succulents cact slash cactus, one of them has a bowl underneath it and it's his cat who had died his bowl that they used to. And so uh, if you had hit on anything that had to do with cat yeah, or anything of that sort, yeah, that might have also have been a big hit. Well, I saw the cactus. You fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> and Wendy, Wendy says the uh, <coughs> that people f remember the hits, forget the misses. Of course. And Robin loved the story about the gypsy. He said, and it is it's true. There's so many tips out there that we're not aware of. Um, they call you were you've worked in the haunted hayride business and have had gypsies that have tell the story about the gypsy that you were um you were working there, with. Were you there susan um no i don't think i was there at that time because <coughs> i'd go to the time. haunted hayride with you from time to time so but, what do you want me to tell you about the real gypsies i've worked with well you had the one that was working with you that one year because the the haunted yeah, hayride I, it's I, a I haunted hayride it's a it's a festival of haunted you know, people chasing each other around with it's, a, it's a... It's a pumpkin festival where everybody dresses up like monsters and it was very well done. It was very Absolutely. expensive. And for a while they had psychics working. Uh, and I, so I worked there. It was a great place to practice and find out about people's human nature. And I never... I'm trying not to say lied. I never outwardly took anybody for anything. I just, you know, it was a pumpkin festival. It wasn't an <laughs> ashram, you know, I wasn't trying to. Anyway, I never did any talking to the dead or anything like that. They were tarot card readings and that's it. So one night I went and there would always be a different cadre of psychics from night to night. And they all gave us these tents that said psychics on them, just like the old days. So one day I go into work and I see this woman and she's, She's just got her babushka on and a gold earring, and she's kind of heavy set, and she's got an apron on. And I mean, she looked like the, you know, what's the word? The, central uh, casting. Uh, central casting version of the gypsy woman. <laughs> I mean, but she was real. I mean, as far as I could tell, she was just, she's yelling, and she's, her husband is this big barrel chested guy with a handlebar mustache. He's going, putting that over here right now. I need that. I need you to do this. And she's going, he's going, ah, I'll get to it. Huh? Typical, like if you would see it in a movie, you would say there's a typical gypsy couple, the big, big man, uh, the woman, very pushy, very uh, uh, not especially attractive, but nonetheless aggressive. So I work with them one night in the same tent and the, the husband used to go out to the crowds walking by and say, you need to go in and talk to my wife. She'll tell you everything you need to know. Come, 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 come. People would come in and sit down and talk to her. Now, she, here's, here was her method, which, again, totally nefarious. But to watch it in action for a couple of nights was interesting. So what she would do is she would sit the person down. And usually, again, there was a line of people going outside the tent waiting to talk to her. She'd do a standard tarot reading. She'd deal out the cards. Oh, this is the hanged man. Oh, this is very good. The lovers, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, at the end, she'd say, oh, I see something very bad, very dark. But the problem is there is a whole line of other people who are waiting to talk to me. I tell you what, here, and she'd reach down and she had like a, a clipboard, you know, with index paper on it. And she'd say, write down your name and your phone number. And tonight when I get home, I will pray for you. And if the prayer doesn't work, I'll call you in the morning and tell you that you need to get another reading with me in private because I just don't have time, right? So most people would be like, I'm not giving this bitch anything. You know, I, I'm here to have fun. Bye. Or they, I could tell they would probably write down a fake name and phone number, which is pretty funny. But by the end of the evening, 
She had like two or three pages of people's names and phone numbers. And at the end of the night, as we're packing up, she says to her husband, I got enough work here for the next month. And they high five each other. So I, I like it, home. but I don't like it. <laughs> I, I'm sitting there just sit, thinking to myself, how can people do this? But to them, I'm sure it was a way of life. And I'm sure if they weren't at the place that I was working that night, they were somewhere else. But and, and once they filtered out all the people that had given them a phony name and phone number, they still had hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So it just goes on and on. And that's tradition talking there. So I'm, I'm tempted to think that those people were the real deal. That's the closest I've ever seen to the actual gypsy Romany thing. But who knows? They might have been Hollywood actors. I don't know but they were very convincing. Well, beats meeting tables. Yeah, or doing whatever they did in a, a previous life, who knows. Tell, real quick, tell the story of um, how you used to work in the spiritualist church and before the doors open, um, you know, they're all getting their crystals and stuff ready and then when the doors shut for the day, all the, with, yeah. with the actual attitude is of the people around you, the like, you know, yeah, the, the most the most ascetic ones, the ones that in the morning were meditating before people sat down with them, or or uh, seriously looking at their at their uh, paperwork or their sim sigils and symbols, and you know the ones that were that had the, the the most serious demeanor. After eight hours and the doors closed, they were like. Who's buying a beer tonight? You know, and I remember seeing one woman, she was probably 90 years old. She says, somebody roll me a joint. I mean, they became <laughs> completely different human beings. And if you were, they wouldn't do it for a while till they got to know me. Then once they got to know me, they all loosened up, which was wonderful. I, I, I you know, I thought it was great that they were willing to let their, whatever it is down and become real people which is all they are, right? Just with a lot of skill. All right, I guess that's plenty. We'll have to do this again another day. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I sure as heck did. I, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to think of something else for- I, I, have, an, I have something else I'll share with you, but I think that it's so much fun to, um, to watch you work because it's obviously, I'm, somebody like myself, I couldn't do, I have a postcard right here that I found and I doubt I could come up with even a ha half a good story from this random photograph to tell somebody I'm seeing, I, I don't think it's a, it's a skill to be able to tell stories like that in such a way where you're not. I don't like, the, I don't think of it as a skill. I think of it as a uh, entertainment. But it is something that not everybody can do. That's what deception. I'm trying to say. It's a deception that is, accepted which but, is well the more we understand it and doing these kinds of talks like we're doing i think it helps skeptics understand that these how especially yes, if you're in a vulnerable we don't need to preach to the choir i want this out in the world <laughs> well what we need to understand is that if you are desperate or lonely or whatever these kinds of conversations with a psychic can mean a world of difference to you. Somebody reaching out and saying that they're connecting to you. I am, you know, in this world of where we're out with our phones and we're spending our time staring at a phone most of the time and ignoring people around us, especially in the age of COVID, to have somebody say, I am looking right into you. I see a cactus. <laughs> but you're connected to them. Done. Your focus is entirely on that person who is possibly, <laughs> thanks, Carmen. Um, what did she say? She's, well, she says I'm, uh, it helps to be a, a higher vibration bitch, which is re going back to that comment from the person who, who sent me a private message this morning who was sending. Don't go. We're not going to go there. I know, right but now. she's that's what Carmen is referring to is that right. it's pretty funny. Anyway, but if you are 
focusing on this person who has been has been feeling you know sad and desperate and lonely and and if you're willing to connect with this you know sad lonely person who maybe has real pain in their life even if they think you are a fraud they don't care because you've just made a a connection with them that well the sad part is it doesn't matter i don't really care i'm just getting paid by the hour <laughs> you get paid by the minute didn't you in the 900 yeah, at lines? one point i got paid by the minute 399 a minute <laughs> no that was that was different i'm talking about just when i did private readings oh yeah you give a 15 minute reading or whatever yeah i mean i i try to help and be helpful but the bottom line is i'm making money it's terrible oh robin made a really good point i think robin wrote this wikipedia page the maria duval scam and i have the book it was really good yeah she's the one in florida right i uh, well anyway let's not give her his point time. is he's saying well she's she's dead now i think or very close no, to it. but anyway prison. the scam is still going on but what he's yeah. saying is that the people would say she was their friend right yeah and that's they why they had to keep sending her money <laughs> cash okay thank you everyone i hope you enjoyed yeah. this that was a lot of fun thank you mark thank you